so I started to investigate just the uh, oh North American accounts of the giant skeletons that were found in the Ohio and Pennsylvania Valley. And I'm talking everything from 10 to 12 foot tall guys found in copper armor. And the more I investigated, I found out it was a worldwide situation where we're talking some really big skeletons Jeez. all the way up to 36 feet tall. If we only had basketball then, huh? Well, I can tell you this. When, when some of these guys, some of the British giants, for instance, one guy specifically, listen to this, a guy by the name of William Joyce in the late 1800s, he could lift a ton dead weight. In other words, 2,000 pounds. And that you're only oh. talking about, about a guy that was eight, you know, eight feet tall. So I think <laughs> the situation that most people find uh, in history is there are too many question marks. And when you're looking at the temples of the world and you're looking at all of the, uh, what would you say, the, the answers that are out there but seemingly are, you know, swept under the rug, I think it becomes apparent that for some reason someone doesn't want the issue of giants brought up. And that's why I spent three decades dealing with it. And as you know, the book has got on the front cover uh, a British explorer with two 12-foot giants from Kashmir uh, standing over him. Now, again, this was in the late 1890s, and as early as 1970, in the jungles of the Amazon, there have been actual reports of people running into uh, very shy natives who are in excess of nine feet tall. How tall do you think the little guy is in the middle on your cover of your book, Genesis 6? According to... According to uh, the, they claim he's right at uh, six feet. When I, I got that from the, uh, oh, a group of people in London that have the only photos of these guys around. Also in the book, I have a picture of a 12-foot-2 Irish mummy. And it's fascinating because, uh, you know, later in the show we can get into the mummy issue. But the point that's fascinating is if you take guys that are all the way up to 36 feet tall, 20 feet tall, the emperor of China had two 15-foot guards. Charlemagne himself uh, was surrounded by rather large individuals. We have a Roman emperor named Maximinius who uh, was a giant himself. It's, it, his wife's uh, bracelet, George, would fit around his thumb. We're talking about people that are, uh, you know, we're talking about people with big egos, big appetites, and incredible strength. We're not talking about the medical situation that you see sometimes on the History Channel where they show giants as being these guys that don't live very long, uh, obviously like uh, Andre the Giant, who was a wrestler. Right. We're talking about guys with unbelievable strength, unbelievable knowledge, and unbelievable wisdom. On the website, I even show some of the Incan kings, I-N-C-A-N, Inca, from the Inca Empire, uh, basically in the museums of Peru, that have four to five times the cranial mass of a standard uh, human skull. So we're not only talking about big guys, we're talking about people with incredible intelligence, and we're talking about an answer that obviously classical anthropology and archaeology, these guys don't want to deal with this. So I think it was David Hatcher Childress that uh, coined the word Smithsonian Gate. In other words, a, a cover-up of history that's rather uh, pronounced. And when you begin to dig, as I began digging over 30 years ago, you can find out that the reports of of newspapers in America, of newspapers around the world. Interestingly enough, after I did uh, the last show with Art, somebody went on the website and they sent me a, from Eastern Europe, they've already sponsored a, uh, oh, I guess you'd say an undertaking to go into some of the caves where they found a whole, basically, cavern of giant skeletons. And, well, in, and the New Ancient American, which is a magazine that's put out in America, they found yes. the most contemporary uh, find it someplace in desert southwest and it actually shows the pictures of the giants shows the cave etc so basically interestingly enough too is that when you look at this you see that there is a very very how should i say skittish uh, archaeological base out there that doesn't even want to deal with this well do you think Stephen, that these giants were regular offsprings of people or that they they popped up in a very unusual way uh, depending on the percent of population at the time. Well, first of all, I believe that the gen the reason I use Genesis 6, let me read this and then I'll comment. All right. Genesis 6, 1, 2, and 6 are kind of interesting because it gets into the whole alien, the whole Nephilim, the whole Zachariah, Sitchin, Anunnaki, but let me read it. It says this, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bore children unto them the same became the mighty men which are of old men of renown 
Now, there are two uh, opposing viewpoints on this. During about the 4th century uh, uh, A.D., the, the Catholic Church basically said, well, no, these were the sons of Seth, and the sons of Seth married the daughters of Cain, and out of good men marrying bad women came giants. We're talking about men, uh, George, that had six fingers, six toes, and double sets of teeth. Now, that's six. kind of interesting, because all through the digs in North America, especially in Catalina and California, Lompoc, where there's a prison in California, they found red-haired giants, 10 to 12 feet tall, double sets of teeth, six fingers, six toes. You go to South America, and uh, the Mayan uh, god Shambachlum had six fingers, six toes. And so I believe there is a supernatural element, and then you've got writers who claim that we were created by the aliens, uh, the Anunnaki, and I, I obviously I don't believe that. I believe that all the myths of history center around this one thing, that basically supernatural beings had sex with earth women and produced giants. And it's, a, it's in the Bible, it's in Genesis 6, Jude 6, 2 Peter, but more than that, and in addition to that, it's all through history. So you believe that these giants are the offspring of uh, fallen angels? Fallen angels from way gone back. Well, from way gone back, and wow. it gets into the interesting thing. You know, if we go into, let's say, Greek mythology, we've got satyrs, and satyrs was a goat-like body, a human torso, and ram's horns. Yes. We've got centaurs, head and torso of a man, lower half of a horse. Cyclops, giants with one eye in the center of forehead. And by the way, two months ago in Indonesia, there were actual cyclopean skulls found. One eye, giant, and immediately the standard, if you will, anthropo anthropological community came out and said, oh, these are just basically uh, calcified remains of a normal skull. Uh, we've got tritons, mermaids, minotaurs, uh, chimeras, or chimeras, and it's interesting because there's actually a patent now with the U.S. Patent Office that combines human DNA and animal DNA. So when we've got a supernatural element inserted into the equation of, in essence, fallen angels even having sex with animals. And by the way, this is ancient Sumerian text. It's ancient Babylonian text. This is something that is through history. It begins to explain a lot of where the myths came from. Let's get into Genesis, if we can, without the biblical uh, and religious twist to it. Sure, but I'm really talking about it from a historic aspect. Exactly, exactly, and, and let you interpret some of this for us, because it is there for people to read, and you've been able to pull that out when you have written about it in your, in, in your book. Uh, b but it is there, and it has gone on since the beginning of time here, hasn't it? It has, and you know, it's interesting because, again, you know, the, the, you basically you have from, from just the Genesis account of, of these uh, fallen angels having sex with earth women, producing, again, a, a race of, of incredible people. You know, everybody's heard of David and Goliath, yes. but what they don't know is they can, they, that Goliath had, you know, four brothers, and these guys all had six fingers, six toes. There's a guy named Og, O-G, not a hard name to remember, and some scholars place him at 18 feet tall. So from the <laughs> Genesis account in the Old Testament, through all of the history, uh, or excuse me, the historical accounts, through the different uh, continents, whether you're dealing with South America, whether you're dealing with North America, the Europeans, the Asians, the Australians, the Greeks, everybody has got their records, their bones. And, you know, interestingly enough, the Aztecs, and there was a lot of chronicling of the Aztecs by different uh, Spaniards that followed, especially uh, their priests that followed the conquistadors, and basically the Aztecs said their entire civilization was built by giants. Tiwanaku in Bolivia, up by Lake Titicata. The point is, is that uh, they're, 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 they have fantastic architecture that still no one can explain. Baalbek, the giant cities of B-A-S-H-A-N, Bashan, which were called the cities of the giants. So I'm talking about a time period when there were some really big guys. And See, in, in classic uh, uh, anthropology, classic archaeology, this stuff is basically taboo. They won't deal with it. And it's fascinating because when you go even to uh, 1905 in the Phoenix Gazette, there are, there are actual full front page stories about a gentleman uh, from the Smithsonian named Kincaid, who actually found uh, caverns with giant statuary from uh, Egypt, etc. And when people have tried to investigate, David Hatch, Childress, and others, I mean, it's, it's fascinating. They hit a dead wall. It's kind of...